Anyone have any idea why game developers put up with the mess that is OpenGL, Vulkan, Metal, DirectX 12, and all the problems with day one drivers? Um, the problem is, at the end of the day, that if you're a game programmer, your job is to make a good game, right? And in the old days, when games were smaller and the underlying systems were simpler, it meant you could work with the system more directly and tweak things and re-implement things, right? Now everybody has to deal with such big and complicated systems. They don't have any time to question things or think about changing them or even to understand the system they're working with really. Like nobody does or few people do. So, so like, there just isn't time to fucking do anything because we're drowning in dealing with all this stuff. So for somebody like me to take all this time and say, I'm going to spend half my time working on this programming language. Oh, dude, my cake has a Trigicon SRO on it for some reason because I shoved it. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just very unusual because nobody feels like they have the time. And the observation that I made back, back in 2014, a long ass time ago, that made me want to start down this road was, yes, I'm drowning in all these problems, but the reason I'm drowning in all these problems is the decisions we made in the past. So we're just going to continue to drown in these problems ever more unless we start making decisions differently, right? When most people have not made decisions differently, and things have been getting worse, just like I thought they would. And I mean, COVID also added to that, to the point where we have these AAA games coming out that are obviously like barely anything happened. So like the new Battlefield, the new COD, the new Overwatch, like those games barely got worked on in real terms. Like lots of people spent lots of hours supposedly working on the game, but most of those hours did not produce anything useful. Part of that's work from home, but part of it is just that's where we are today in terms of our technical systems and all the crap we have to deal with to do anything. So nobody feels empowered to fix anything because everything is too big and too horrible. And then also, yeah, I mean, so part of the problem is what are you going to do if you don't like the situation with shading languages, for example, because you don't, right? What the thing you would have done in the old days is just make a make a shading language and make it run everywhere. And then maybe people will use that. You can't do that now, in part because everything is so complicated. Making a shading language even work on one GPU is almost impossible in part because most of the information is proprietary and in part because it's so much more complicated. So making the equivalent of C, but for shaders today is at least perceived to be impossible for even a group of people to do, let alone one person. Right. And so we're just in a very horrible place and that's why things are the way they are. GPUs have vastly different ISAs. So did CPUs back when C was made. That is not an excuse. It is not an excuse. It's much easier to implement support for DX12 Vulcan Metal than support for every vendor and GPU generation combo. That is an excuse. Dude, CPUs in the past didn't even support the same kind of integers. They had totally different representations for floating point numbers if they had them at all. Um, they stored strings in different ways, and yet we still made programming languages that ran across these CPUs. It's that not that hard. What you're saying, you're repeating propaganda. Why, why does this propaganda exist? It's because the makers of GPUs want to stand between you and their hardware. They want more of a vertical control over the system. That is why we are in the situation that we are. If there were an open source GPU, imagine somehow that there were an open source GPU that was like community owned, which I don't, I'm not philosophically arguing for this because I don't think it's possible, but imagine it were community owned and there were no trade secrets and it was just as fast as an RTX 4090, right? 
people would have no problem making programming languages for it. And if there were three of them that had different architectures, people would have no problem making programming languages for them. The reason we can't do it is because NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel don't want us to do it. That is why. That is the reason. And then also because they're so complicated that we would need massive amounts of help anyway. They want to be in control of what languages run on their thing, and that's why we're in such a mess. Like, again, people who, who repeat this reasoning that the GPU ISAs are too different have literally no idea what C ran on. <laughs> like, there were so many different computers. Dude, C ran on connection machines. It ran on VAXs. It ran on shitty home computers. It ran on everything. What's an ISA? Instruction set architecture. The interface language that the CPU speaks that you tell it what you want it to do. The real reason there isn't a uniform shading language is that all these GPU vendors see their shading language or their, um, it varies depending on who you're talking about, right? So now it's more about compute languages being proprietary, right? Because they want to get in on the neural network stuff and all that. But so like operate, so there's operating system vendors want a piece of the pie. Um, so they have their own. So you have like metal shading language, which Apple wants to use to lock you into Apple operating systems, right? HLSL, Microsoft wants to use that to lock you into Microsoft operating systems and so forth. And then you have GPU vendors who on the back end, um, they see their driver for HLSL and you know, Vulcan and metal and whatever as being a competitive advantage for them because they invest resources into it and all that, right? And it, it's stupid. Like, <laughs> it's interesting because we saw something like this in the past. So like back in the workstation days, people who made these computers had their own C compiler usually, right? And they saw it as a competitive advantage. Um, but eventually now we have Clang and GCC and all this stuff that are generally better than how those compilers were in the past. You still have some proprietary compilers. So for example, Intel still makes a C compiler. Nobody really uses it though, except in very specialized cases as far as I know. Is there a good faith rationale for Metal's existence? I mean, look, here's the thing. In a sense, there's a good faith rationale for any programming language's existence, right? Because you need it to be possible to have new ways to try to do things better. That's how things improve. So you shouldn't ever say, hey, we should lock down all the shading languages. We don't need any more. No, right? Um, but if you think Metal is a better shading language, let us use it on any GPU that we want, on any operating system that we want, right? And then people will use it if it's better. <laughs> but that's not how it is, right? You can only use it on Apple operating systems. Intel's is Intel's LLVM branch, basically. Yeah, I mean, their C compiler went way back in time before LLVM was a thing, but it's probably a completely different compiler now, right? 